Medieval life wasn't all about knights and princesses. Be shocked how women back then endured the most peculiar social customs just to fit in. Number 10. Ladies plucked their foreheads. France was a center of fashion during the Middle Ages. Flemish and French women led the way. A naturally wide brow is a sign of brain and beauty. So, higher hairlines became a trend during the 15th century. They plucked their hair around the forehead to achieve that look. They also partnered it with unusually shaped headdresses with long veils and excessive ribbons. Number 9. The lassies had bloody periods. Medieval ladies suffered cramps naturally and had to suffer the ordeal monthly. Since the local emporiums didn't have a solution yet, they created homemade pads using absorbent fabrics, rags, or blood moss. It's a kind of bog moss used in war for wound dressing. Aside from that, our prim and proper ladies had to worry about leaks. That's why red petticoats were famous to hide the stain. Scarlet red meant something. You wouldn't know if it's the dye or the blood, if only medieval men knew the time of the month when to stay away from women. Number eight, dressing her up was a disaster. Worrying about elaborate gowns, robes, and frocks kept medieval aristocratic women busy. Yet, they had to endure a laborious process of wearing clothes. Members of the fairer sex wore complicated undergarments, rib-crushing corsets, and itchy gloves amongst others. Then, they had to carry a huge volume of fabric to social events. Anyone who won't conform was ostracized. Take Joan of Arc, for example. She was considered a heretic for wearing a man's armor during battle. Number seven swords were not for girls. Subjugation was a social norm in many aspects during the medieval ages. Women, children, and the elderly were discouraged to join the war. Yet, Matilda of Canossa, the great countess, took arms in battle. Isabella of Castile rallied with her husband. Jean Hachette took the axe and went to combat. Number six, she didn't have student loans. Since medieval women had limited circles, they didn't have access to formal education, except for those from the nobility. But the literate maidens found time to consume books, learn arts, several languages, and other useful domestic skills. For example, Christine de Pizan was a renowned feminist writer of her time. Hildegard of Bingen was a German polymath, mystic, and founder of natural history. Number five, no ballots for her. From east to west, men predominantly had power, influence, and education. Though ladies of high birth were well-read and intellectual, most handled domestic affairs. Their voices in legal matters were hushed. They couldn't sign legal papers, take a loan, or become a witness without a male guardian. But no one could prevent women from meddling behind the scenes. Number four, she played with fire and power. Kings, sheiks, and emperors were known to propagate the royal lineage with several courtesans. Some refined mistresses survived the tempest to receive distinctions in society. The most ambitious could even politically influence the powerful despite the danger. Imperia Cognati was a celebrity courtesan in Rome. Madame de Pompadour was the French king's advisor. Sai Jinhua of China was a war mediator. Theodora of Constantinople was the actress turned mistress until she became an empress. Number three, two kinds of veil awaited her. If she couldn't get married, go to war, or vote, medieval women wore the religious veil. Nunneries were prevalent in the European kingdoms to welcome women who wished to be active, but lacked the connections or education to do so. Nuns were given authority over their organization and charitable activities, but she was still considered non-ordained for the highest positions. In medieval Asia, women were accepted as followers and students of renowned religious figures. Number two, her justice was also distinguished. There was a constant distinction between genders even in criminal persecution. Good thing, women were penalized with more leniency compared to men. In medieval Europe, pregnant women were exempted from gruesome punishments. But the exemptions didn't include the burning stake or stone throwing. Number one, she was expected to be a mother. Medieval women were expected to multiply the husband's race. They only rely on the midwife's experience, herbal drinks, and lots of prayers. The pregnant aristocrats had the privilege of resting in a birthing chamber a month before the expected date. Yet, the mortality rate of newborn babies back then was very high, especially among the destitute. 